Hello and welcome back to the Sch Museum, where today we are heading out with both the Ford GT and the McLaren Senna because it is time to let Puppy drive the Senna. This is exciting. It is. It's long overdue. This started a couple of weeks ago, a bit of a social media campaign. Yes. I think it was about three weeks ago when we took those two uh, to the barn for the first time. And then my followers were quite upset that I hadn't driven the Senna before. So they started this hashtag called Let Puppy Drive the Senna and all of a sudden it was everywhere. It was under all your videos, under all Instagram posts. And I must say a big thank you to my followers who basically made it possible that I'm allowed to drive the Senna today. So that's the plan. We are heading actually with both of the cars plus one of the others for the other guys to head over to Millbrook Proving Ground. We're going to be doing some filming with another party and some sound recording with each of them. But it's the perfect opportunity in the open space at Millbrook to have some fun with both of these. Now you've driven quite a few of the cars here. I've driven almost all of them there. Particularly this. I love this. This I drove for the first time like last year when we went to Italy and I, I don't know what to say. It's just such a driver focused car and I did uh, the fastest I've ever driven in that car, 283 kilometers per hour. Which is about 175, 176 miles an hour or so. That which was quite is exciting. Insane. I'm not sure what we're going to be able to do today. You've also driven the GT Black Series. Yes. You've not yet driven the Vantage Roadster. That's brand new. Not yet, but that's going to come. You drove the Ford GT briefly. Briefly in the US. On so some I'm private roads. Maybe I have another go today. Maybe. Maybe. Why not? The Senna is, of course, new. We'll talk a lot more about the things you need to know with this because it's not an ordinary car. All of the controls are all over the place. You had a go in the GT8 as well. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> but it's just around the car park. <laughs> yes, but a little go to see if you can handle the clutch and stuff. It's not the easiest car to drive. G-Wagon you've driven. Lots of miles. M3. Yes. Pro and Roadster. Yes. GT4 you've taken out quite a few times. Love that one. Heritage RS. Love that one too. But never the GR Yaris. I've not driven the Yaris yet. The Yaris has never, just doesn't take your fancy? <sighs> I don't not know. I know I should give it a go, but maybe At not now. Point. Let's well, focus on the center first. Today is going to be about both of these two. First up, we need to get them unplugged. Of course, the cars are living here on their SeaTech smart chargers, keeping the batteries good to go. With cars like this, when you have very lightweight lithium batteries, the last thing you want to do is to let them go dead. Then you have a very expensive bill and a big headache. So we just need to unplug these quickly. All of the Schmimobiles live on their chargers. And it's a big thanks to SeaTech for being a partner of the Sch Museum. These are pretty easy to disconnect and unplug and just come around. In the case of this one, you undo the clasps in the front, close that back down, and jobs are good. In. in the case of the Senna, you actually have to unlock the car because it plugs in under the nose bridge, which you have to get the place exactly right. It's about here, he says. There we go. That releases. Unplug that. Make sure that's closed. You don't want to drive away with that still open, but nice and easy. Get those unplugged and probably need an excite as well, given we're starting pretty early, about half past seven this morning, but let's get both cars out. We'll take them over to Millbrook and then it's gonna be time for you to drive the Senna. I'm excited. Some days are good days and I think today's a better day. <laughs> let's do it, let's go. <laughs> Good. Good. Morning. Morning, dude. So, I'm going to be driving the Senna with Puppy. You're in charge of the Ford GT. That's all right. Good. You like that car? Yeah. <laughs> and we're also going to take the GTR Roadster. So, Tom and Brad are going to be in the GTR Roadster. In a couple. You want to drive that? Later. Later. We'll have time. We've got a lot of time today. Um, I just need to stick some cameras in here, and then we're going to get out and uh, drive over. Doing this in the Senna and putting cameras in here is not the easiest thing because it's a very awkward cabin. You've got the floating screen. Somehow we will position it here-ish, but obviously I do a lot of this when I'm filming all of my videos, popping cameras in and then using the phone to see what that sees so you can load it up. And this is always quite fun. If I click here, you can literally see we've got camera reception. Brad is filming me showing you guys how I'm setting up the cameras and you can set a different wide angle and things. Oh, it's lagging. No, there we go, we're good. It's not too bad, and we'll be out in a second. This car is not exactly a daily driver. It only comes out for special occasions. It is very noisy, it is very raw, but you've had some pretty cool experiences in it so far, I think. 
Yes, I think two were like the most memorable ones. One was uh, the pure McLaren event in Spa, and yes. the other one was the road trip from Munich to Start. Two very different drives. Spa yes. Frank Scholl, the Belgian Formula One Grand Prix circuit. He says we've got the Ford GT over his shoulder. <laughs> so, I mean, that looks just unreal on the road. It doesn't look like it belongs here. And we've got the two dark red Shimano wheels in front of us. So Spa, we had two days up there. You came along and we had some fun for some laps. Yes. And then also that very long drive when we went from Munich over to Switzerland, which was the time where we basically realized that this car is no good. For road for, trips? For no. road trips and long distance <laughs> drives. There is very little luggage space. I've wedged the bag just behind us. You can, and I do have the fitted luggage from Scudoni that can fit there, but it's far from ideal. No, it's way too rough. And uh, where we're heading today is probably more appropriate, the Millbrook Proving Ground, where a lot of testing and development work is done. I recently came for a run around the Alpine circuit with Aston Martin and the Valkyrie with Darren Turner. I think today, though, we're not going to be driving quite. Um, you never know, you know. <laughs> you never know. It's basically an environment where you can drive safely and you've got a lot of space and it's one way traffic. It looks quite like a road course, which is really cool. And they even have the jump, the famous jump. I saw that. Which is from uh, James Bond. Yes. Yes. Casino Royale. Jinx. <laughs> yes. And um, yeah, so we'll be driving around there hopefully later on today as part of the filming, which is effectively to record the engine sounds of the Senna and the Ford GT uh, later on today. So it's only about 15, 20 minutes from where we are now as we go back past the Ford GT and we make our way over, find out what's going on, and very shortly we're going to be swapping seats and you'll get behind the wheel of the Senna. Are you excited? I'm very excited. I must say I'm a bit nervous just because, you know, it's a very, very powerful car. I think it's the most powerful car we've done have driven, right? Definitely. I mean, you drove the AMG GTR, my original GTR, a lot, which had the tune yes, and turbos. For but I didn't, I didn't drive it after you did the second Rentec stage. Ah, uh, okay. So, so only the 670 horsepower stage. Exactly. <laughs> a mere 670. Well, this is very similar to the LT. I know how much you've enjoyed driving the 670. Very much. Um, similar kind of hydraulic steering feel, which was one of your highlights. Same familiar seating position and feel of the car around you. So I think you will be right at home. I hope so. And uh, we'll get there shortly and give it a go. We're here at Millbrook and we have actually already been doing some recording. We've come to join Zach's Garage and Sounding Sweet, who are picking up the sounds from a host of different cars for various different applications. So the Senna is actually completely rigged up for the purpose. You can see we have got a lot of different microphones around the exhaust here, on the rear deck, even tucked into the grills, some inside the bodywork, one even inside the roof snorkel to get the induction sound that you get, and the turbo sounds from that, and some in the car. So I've been actually driving the car, doing some clutch controls, some burnouts, all sorts of fun things, with no AC on, on a day like today, which has been very, very warm. <laughs> space and we've got a car that happens to have variable drift control also I, known as ESC off. I think those two go quite well together don't they? I've never done VDC on this first time. This is gonna be interesting. See what happens to be honest. Yeah. Right, see ya. See ya. the center and start to rig up the GT because we're here with all of the guys we've got the red cars it seems over on this side Tony drove up with the GT yeah Tom drove up with the GTR Roadster and Zach is here as well with the Pista Zach came by the Museum I'm sure it was only a week ago but yeah. it feels like a lot longer ago than yeah. that with this car and Zach actually arranged today introduced through Zach's Garage Limited with the guys from Sounding Sweet this because you recorded the Pista as well. We recorded the Pista last night. It was a night shoot, which was something a bit different, but still Why not? fun. It works because here at Millbrook we've got the Mile Straight, we've got the Hill Course, we've got some wide open areas. Basically, the Proving Ground has just about anything you could need in this respect. It's effectively a big toy box. It is a big toy box, especially with cars like this. So, what we need to do then now is swap over this stuff. So, take off the guys from uh, Soundly Sweet, we'll take off all the mics from the center, pop them onto the GT, I think that's going to be our opportunity to take the Senna to go and try that out on the hill route 
and let Puppy give it a go. The Senna has very promptly been derigged. It had all sorts of equipment inside for all of the different recording and everything that's been going on, but that has now all been stripped back. If we head round towards the next garage, the team from Sounding Sweet are very quickly getting everything set up now on the Ford GT to have this ready to go off and film with everything. So as you can imagine, all sorts of cables and microphones and everything that could possibly be needed to record all of the sounds that it makes, including in this case, inside the engine bay, which you can't do on the center because you can't even open it. I think it is time. Are you ready? I'm prepared. You are very prepared. I got some learner plates from the petrol station where we stopped earlier are because gonna, I think that's appropriate. Are we putting like, them on? I think one should go here and one should go on the wing plate. How does this? It's been a long time since doing this. It's been more than 15 <laughs> years ago that I last do this. Well, so. Learner plates go, going go on the center. It. Work out exactly where these go. We've got to yeah. stick them on somehow. I think they'll probably peel off, right? Do they have a peel on the back? I think they I peel think they probably need this. They are peelable. They are peelable. They're peelable. Perfect. So well, that makes it easy. Do you want to? makes it super easy. Do you want to do the honor and put that one a on? A learner the... plate on a center. <laughs> yes. It's the first time a learner plate has ever been on the center. <laughs> <laughs> so this is literally, this is not going to be tidy at all. <laughs> It already has a crease in it now. Yeah. Just like that? Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. It's, it's very creased. There we go. We've got so a learner plate on the center. Suits the car. Suits the car. <laughs> and do the back one? Do you want to do it? Go? Well, I think you should do it. Okay. Where's I think that one going to go? On the wick? Because there's nowhere on the back of this car you can put it. I mean, not really, unless, I mean, you could put it there, but you wouldn't see it. So. End plate it is. Thank you. Not that that really helps the person behind, but hey, that's not a problem for today. It certainly helps the person from the side. The funny thing about that is that the wing tilts forwards and backwards, and obviously that will that works. <laughs> that's that's quite quite the air bubbly learner plate. Well, I need to go back to Dub Customs to okay. be taught how to put stuff on. All right, let's climb in then and take the center out. Let's go for a few laps. It's getting serious now. It is. First lap, I'm going to take the wheel to explain a little bit about this car. Fair enough. And show you the route. And second and third, I guess, are going to be over to you. So the car rattles like crazy. But I know, I know that. that. <laughs> Not helped by having various different radios and all sorts of things in here. Oh, and it's hot. It's AC. quite, it's quite toasty in here. Bottom is on the roof, which is just because. But let's head out and go over to the hill route. The beauty of this then is that we have the hill route test facility. It is effectively a one-way road that mimics a mountain pass where you can practice, experiment, they do endurance testing, and I suppose this is your sighting lap. I guess so, yeah. Feel. Right now it just feels like a road, <laughs> doesn't it? It does feel very normal. You've got to watch out for the bumps on the left there, which uh, are okay. pretty nasty in suspension. You can't answer like this, but basically a few tight hairpins. I feel like I already need to hold on a little. It meanders back and forth. And at the moment, the car is just in automatic. You know how this works. It's yes, I do. It's speed dual clutch. There's very little to stress and worry about. Obviously, there's no oncoming traffic. We know we've got it clear for ourselves. That's beautiful. <laughs> you can meander backwards and forwards a little bit. You just roll with it, and I'll give you some guidance as to which way the corners go. You're going to be my instructor. More or less. Here it opens up. There are also quite the gradients. Obviously, this is seriously uphill. And watch out around here because this is where it looks like you want to turn left, but you actually want to go straight down. So okay. You don't want to be tricked into. Yeah, I think I'm going to take it very easy. <laughs> and then you rock and roll through this dip up towards the next crest with a particularly confusing bend. And I mean, imagine driving this like a racetrack. But as you go around the top here, you think it's gonna go straight on, but actually dips way down to the left. Why does it feel a bit like going uh, around the Nordschleife? It's, it's <laughs> very like that, isn't it, these hills? And then we've got the famous jump. You know that? So that's the one where they filmed uh, the movie. This means it is time to swap around. Are you ready for this? I'm not sure I'm ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna give it a go. Button for the doors on the roof. Let's swap around and head back out with Puppy driving the center. You're already nice and comfortable in here. 
semi, I guess. I'm quite excited right now yes. that you're about to drive the Senna. So, seating position good? I would like the steering wheel to be a little bit you lower. You can do that. It's not uh, automatic like the LT. You have to pull the lever down there and then move that. But you can press firmly on the brake. It's a very yeah. difficult brake pedal. It is very Lots hard. of pressure. Yes. And it's a very sensitive throttle pedal as well. Okay. Mirror's good. Mirror's fine. Mirror's fine. In which case, it drives, as you know, to pop it into automatic. Either pull the paddle or press the D in the middle. And then... Here we go. Hope he's driving the centre. Hope he is driving the centre indeed. And we follow it around here. This is where we've got the two lanes. You will want to take the right lane further up because of all the bumps on the ground that we saw earlier. Yeah. You're at the wheel then, entering a test facility. You want to keep it in the right lane around here because of the bumps that are going to be on the road up ahead of you. Yep. You've got this gentle right. It will start tightening up further ahead of us. This nice easy cruise. Here's some of the swooshes from the turbos. Okay, I have to get used to the brake pedal. That's it's an odd one. It's a very different one, a very different feel to the LT. This gets much tighter as we go around the corner. It's more race car, isn't it? Yeah. Then we've got this gentle sweep to the left before it will turn back to the right as well once you go up towards the crest. And this is a much, much tighter corner, but you can now use both lanes. There are no more bumps or anything like that in the way. Multiple apexes around this corner, so you want to get on the brakes and turn it in and head on round. It's a pretty gentle left, take the apex a little bit more towards the left. You can do the same round towards the right using the gentle curve. How does it feel? dramatic to be honest. Yeah. It's very much like, it's very rattly. And yes. Very loud. And very bumpy. And very bumpy as well. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> like those sort of undulations. It's quite a cool loop. It's a good place to test and learn and experience what the car is like. You're just touching on the surface of it, believe me. This is where it gets really tight around the corner. Yep. We're that's, gonna take the first bit off towards the right. But that's one of the beautiful things that I love so much about the LT is the steering is just so precise. Yes. Keep it straight over the jump. <laughs> <laughs> Almost feeling like James Bond in that movie. But not rolling. No, thank you. This is basically the end. And ready to go for round two? I guess so. That was a very quick lap, to be honest. I thought it was a bit longer, but... Now for the second run, we are going to go into active dynamics. You're still in automatic, but at the moment in sport and sport for the handling of the powertrain. So a slightly sportier setup, which will just give you a little bit more of the right gear and you won't have any of those funny last minute downshifts. Okay. And that kind of thing. But yeah, over to you really. Gentle left, starting to feel more of the noise. Not much noisier. Now you can accelerate up the hill a little bit. <laughs> That's incredibly quick. I remember when we when you took me around Spa, that was so yeah. dramatic. That was fairly flat out. Yeah. But this is a wonderful mix of corners, isn't it? Yes, you have, and not just driven it, around effectively a mountain pass. Get around to the left here. Yeah. It is a, uh, a crazy machine, right? It's pretty intense, and around it's so much more, I would say, engaging than even driving the LT, which I think you have to, to think way more about it. You just can't, can't just jump in, and as you said, it's not a car for everyday driving. 
No. But it's, <laughs> it's good fun. I like, I really like it. Good. That's how it should be. Well, guys, Puppy has driven the center. So you just need to pop it into neutral, park brake. There we go. Fun. Magic. Should we go for one more? Yeah. Swap around. <laughs> I want to go drive the Alpine route as well again. Let's do this. <laughs> a little bit easier than the Senna. This car has lights around very nicely. Where does the 4A come from? And I think we should do a... Well, we talked about it before. Yeah. Did we? But now we we've lost car facts. Video. Car facts. Car facts. Car facts. The, same, the yeah. same fact every single video. <laughs> <laughs> we could do... This we is what do. always aiming. I have a quick question, Tim. We don't have car facts. We have Where's the M8? Where is the M8? <laughs> Where, is the M8? <laughs> Where is the M8? The obligatory museum question. I don't know where the M8's gone today. I thought Jeff Bezos would have brought it back. Oh yeah, he took it. He took it on a run with him and brought it back. Yeah, I forgot that. Did you saw the car. It left a long time ago, but it's oh. this, uh, this running question of where is the Emmy? <laughs> Three. I put everyone to sleep now. No, everybody's looking everyone's at the F40, which Ooh, looks so good. Nice. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not can we, can we tease the F40? Yeah, we'll yeah, we'll see you, that. We'll zoom in a little bit. F40 Ooh. being filmed as well. Can you give us some facts on the F40? That car has done 2,000 miles in the last 10 years, and over its whole lifetime, it's done 16,000 miles. Boom, some facts with Zach's garage. Again, F40, Ferrari 40, 40th anniversary. Came out in 1987. More production until 1992. What's the different variants of the F40? F40, F40 LM, F40... More, more in detail. Competizione, was there something like what that? What about DK? Oh, like non-cat, non non-adjust and all of that stuff. Yeah, do you Lots know what it means? versions. As in no cat. What does what, the what adjust is, bit mean? It's just uh, electronic suspension. Ah, yeah, so, so if basically. If you can't adjust, you'll see the car pop up and pop down. Yeah. Car facts with Zach's garage right here. Car facts with Schmigel. That's, that's, that's what this is all about. Now that is one cool looking car. Heads out now to be filmed as well, but we're actually going to be packing up our cars because from here it's going to be time to head back home, back to the Sch Museum with the little gathering. As we are now making our way back home then, the Senna is back to that world of being a little bit too noisy yes. for normal driving. Now I did a couple of drags and things for the sound recording that we've been doing, so I've had this car today at about 160 miles per hour or so, which of course we are not going to be doing on the road. But I am curious, now that you've done some miles in the 675 LT and had a taster of the Senna, how do they stack up for you? That's an easy one. Yeah. I prefer the LT massively. Okay. I think it's, at least for me, a much more road focused car. Don't get me wrong, the Senna is brilliant for what it is, the engineering, the aero, but if you want to drive it on the road, for me, it's just a tad too dramatic. I yes. really enjoy driving the LT in Germany and some very fond memories. I love the steering. I love how it's planted on the road, how safe I feel in it. I mean, the setup obviously is the same, but for me, it's just a bit too noisy and too intense. And that might be completely different on the racetrack because I mean, that Alpine course is very sort of road focused. Yeah. And I, you know, I remember when you took me around Spa and that's where this car feels at home. Mm -hmm. And that's a completely different experience. So I think for, let's say the driving that I do, I prefer the yeah. LT Spider. The it's thing, a beautiful car, you know? I named the color, so I do have yeah. to prefer it. <laughs> way back, way back. The, I, I think the summary of that is that you 
find this very intimidating and you're not wrong. This is a car that you really need to have your wits about you when you drive. You need to be very aware of what you're doing. Yes. And it's a handful for many reasons. The power, the way it drives, the value of it, and everything around that experience. And I guess that, because you said the value of it, it's one of the points that maybe I feel like sometimes on the internet people don't really realize it's when you drive somebody else's car, you're way mm -hmm. more careful. It's not your car. You, you treat it very differently to if it was your own. And yeah. you just even, as you said, you have your wits about it. You have them even more about it. Oh my God. <laughs> Motorway slip roads, hey? That's, um, that's always a good one. So yeah. You can't hear much when you do that in here. No. It's just, this is extreme. This is a car, and the reason it's done 3,200 miles in, what, two and a half years is because you can't use it all the time. Okay, yeah, let's go back into comfort. Let's chill out, pop it in automatic. And cruise. And it's a cruise, it's a cruise back home, a cruise back down the motorway after a very fun day. And we'll get back and uh, pop the cars away. After making it back then to the garage, we actually took out a few of the cars to go and get them fueled up. So of course the GT with its tiny fuel tank needed to go, the Senna as well. And we also took out the G63, which has been running quite a few errands recently, and the Heritage RS, which Tom and Brad took out to go and do some photos because that car had been primarily being used as a storage box itself over the last nine months or so. It's time to start driving it a little bit more. It needed a fill up and it hadn't had one in a very long time. But what else we've done as well is rearrange everything on this side. So we pushed all the cars back. They used to sit basically up to this line and at slightly more of an angle, but we previously had seven cars here and now we've got a line of eight. So this is quite an efficient use of space and gives us an idea for what can happen down at this end when eventually we have the office and mezzanine fabricated because there's room here for a small car and given we've had the return of the Vantage Roadster what about another classic Mini something like that would fit nicely here down the line I wouldn't buy back I think my old Mini because I'd rather get one that has lower mileage and is basically in slightly better condition not that I didn't really enjoy my car but I'd rather spend a bit more to get a tidier car at the end of the day but I think that would be a cool addition to the garage and a classic again but today was of course puppies day that driving the center well first of all thank you very much for letting me do that because i know how it's much cool. that car means to you <laughs> second of all big thanks to all my followers and everyone who sort of was part of the movement to got me into the center within three weeks i think we should start another one saying let no get puppy a porsche targa get in my porsche targa <laughs> Maybe that sounds like trouble. Maybe that takes longer than three weeks, but I would quite like that. <laughs> anyway, no. Um, yeah, big thanks to everyone who sort of pressured Tim into letting me drive the set. <laughs> well, today worked out perfectly. Zach, of course, invited us to go along to meet up with the guys to record some of the audio of the cars, to go out to Millbrook, which is always fun. It's a really interesting place. They have a lot of testing and development work and things that are going on with various different cars. Things, of course, that unfortunately we can't share. But nonetheless, it was very fun for us to see today as well. Today, as always, has been another long one here at the Schmuseum. Very long one. I'm very tired. But that's it for today. See you later.